Greetings, respective viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here I am on Smithfield in London. This is a market since uh, the early Middle Ages. Uh, and this was the scene of the um, seminal event in uh, the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. King Richard II well, was on the throne. He was 14 years old. He'd inherited the crown only three years earlier. Um, the uh, Hundred Years' War was going on. This very costly war against France that it seemed like England could not win. Owing to the tenderness of the king's youth, his um, paternal uncle, John of Gaunt, was ruling on his behalf. John of Gaunt was known that, not because he was very thin, known as that, but because he was born in Ghent, which is now in Belgium. Ghent, Gaunt, get it? Anyhow, so a poll tax had been levied a couple of years before. Every adult over the age of 15 had to pay the said tax, no matter how wealthy or poor it was the same amount. And there was a lot of grumbling about that, people just assumed it was one off. But finance in the war um, was so expensive that it was levied again. And then people just had it. They couldn't take it anymore. There'd also been the statute of laborers law, which didn't set a minimum wage, set a maximum wage. Because of people, um, various workers, were trying to sell their labor to the highest bidder. And of course, the wealthy didn't like that. So in um, Kent and Essex, the uh, peasants were particularly fired up about this. And they gathered in tens of thousands and stormed into London. So there was a priest called John Ball, who'd been wandering around preaching, saying one Adam Delve and Eve Spann who was then the gentleman, to delve, meaning to dig, and to span, past sense of to spin, to spin wool. So back in the Garden of Eden, there was Adam and Eve, he was saying, and we had equality. All humans were on a level footing. How is it that we have aristocracy and so on? We should all go back to equality and nobody should have rights over others and people shouldn't be deprived of their labor. They should all be farming freely and we shouldn't be exploited by the affluent. That was John Ball's message. And um, there were others such as Jack Straw and Watt Tyler who were prominent peasant leaders. Supposedly it broke out in Kent, the Peasants' Revolt, when a tax collector came to Watt Tyler's house and said to his daughter, you have to pay the poll tax because they're over 15. She said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm under 15. He said, well, I'll be the judge of that. People didn't have birth certificates in those days. I'll tell if you're over 15, take your clothes off. And she was horrified, she refused to strip, upon which time he attempted to ravish her. She shrieked and her father heard her cries and came in from the fields and killed the tax collector. That is an apocryphal tale about how the rebellion broke out there. So tens of thousands of peasants congregated on London. Some of them were fired up by this radical cause. Others of them were just opportunistic criminals. And there was a Saturnalia of looting. There was also an anti-Flemish aspect to this. Um, there were quite a few Flemish people who come to work here, anti-immigrant uh, bigotry as ever. And people were shown bread and cheese, asked, what's this? <laughs> if they answered Brot und Kasa, like a uh, Fleming, then they would be put to death on the spot. And the Savoy Palace on the Strand, that was John of Gaunt's palace, was ransacked. People tried to smash everything. And one peasant who tried to take a valuable item was killed by um, the other peasants. So John of Gaunt fled for his life. Um, Richard II heard of the situation, he was in Windsor Castle and he courageously, perhaps foolhardily, came into London to try to take command of the situation. He took over, um, the, well, went to the Tower of London which was impregnable. There were various attempts to, to parley with the peasant leaders. He got into a boat and he went uh, on the Thames towards Greenwich where thousands of rebels had camped and they were persuading him to come ashore. He refused to do so. He said the rebel leaders must come onto his boat. They didn't trust him. They thought they might be taken hostage. He didn't want to land. He might be killed or something. So that didn't happen. The peasants said they weren't against the king, that there was a good king and evil ministers. The king has been tricked by his wicked ministers and we must rid him of these ill counsellors who are giving him the wrong advice. The king was appointed by God. The divine white right of kings was broadly accepted at the time, so they couldn't be against the crown as such because that would be irreligious. But uh, um, the hierarchy was largely um, on the side of the, the oligarchy. The Archbishop of Canterbury at the time was Simon Sudbury. He was also Lord Chancellor. He was desperately unpopular. He was caught and executed on Tower Hill outside the Tower of London. Anyway, finally a meeting was arranged here um, for the uh, 15th of June um, 1381 and which the King came with William Walworth who was um, the Lord Mayor of London and just a few score soldiers to meet thousands upon thousands of peasants. They were armed largely with their farm tools. Um, these would be um, bill hooks, spades, pitchforks and the like, uh, all sorts of uh, knives, some of them archers. Anyhow, um, then there was a discussion. Uh, what Tyler took some wine, swilled it around his mouth and spat it on the ground, supposedly just to cool himself down on this broiling summer's day. 
and William Walworth um, said that that was a disgraceful way to behave in front of his monarch. There was a, an exchange between them and it wasn't quite persiflage. So William Walworth felt that the king had been mortally offended. This is Les Majesté. He drew his sword and he slew Wat Tyler. A rash thing to do in front of thousands of Tyler supporters. And so Tyler supporters drew their bows as though to fire arrows at the royal party. Uh, Richard II was very quick thinking and gallant and he rode forward and he's saying no, no, no bloodshed, let me be your captain, all your promises are granted if you just now disperse in peace. So um, uh, his gallantry uh, saved the day and they were persuaded by that and they did indeed uh, go to their, very, to their homes. That was that the situation was diffused. Gradually the rebels left London with their booty. But only 15 days later Richard II felt, felt significantly secure in his position to uh, metaphorically rip up his promises and even send an announcement that those promises were not freely given, they were extracted under duress, he more or less had a knife to his throat and therefore such promises um, had no validity and that the peasantry would be t returned to a state um, even more vile than that of the civility from which they had briefly escaped and he sent his soldiers to track down and execute the ringleaders of the, of the rebellion. Um, John Ball was found and put to death. Likewise, Jack Straw was found and executed. Some of them were brought here to be executed. Some of them were briefly held in St. Albans Abbey. It's now St. Albans School before they were put to death. So this memorial was put up here with a quotation from John Ball. It was erected in 2015. And it recalls what Thomas Paine said, the guy who wrote Common Sense, that British and American revolutionary saying, the Baron, if the barons have the monument erected at Runnymede, uh, Tyler should have one in Smithfield, because here Smithfield is where he met the king and it would be where he met his doom. Thomas Paine was thinking back to uh, 1215, that June, when Magna Carta was signed by King John at Runnymede by the Thames, about 25 miles west of here. And a quotation from uh, Wat Tyler. Things cannot go well in England, nor ever will, until everything shall be in common when there shall be neither vassal nor lord, and all distinctions levelled, John Ball, who wanted to do away with the feudal system, no more lords and knights, uh, no more hierarchy in the church, just um, equality and freedom. Anyway, it wasn't to be.